trigger happy and I give less than a fuck. Love me or hate me, I'ma show no rip shit up. It's Mr. Nothing, nice on a mic stand. Mike in the left and the zest in my right hand. I took a puff, had enough now, hold up. If that was in dope, niggas getting rolled up. Yeah. What to do, folks? This is Paul Wall. No, actually, this is Acid Roots, and I'm gonna touch base with Kanye West after all these years. So the last couple records I reviewed from Kanye West was way back in 2015 when I reviewed 808s and Heartbreak, and then his debut album, The College Dropout. Well, this is his sophomore album, Late Registration, and this is kind of like, this is kind of a heralded project, definitely something that caught like a lot of accolades and did this is something that did extremely well back in the day when it came out. But I still feel like for the most part, it is kind of a pretty mixed bag in terms of what happened. Now, obviously, because this was basically like the second or third review I did when I started this channel back in 2015, I don't really remember how I scored the college dropout, but it did have some bangers on there. It definitely had... It was like a song like Breathe In, Breathe Out with Ludacris, and there were other ones. There was a Never Let Me Down with Jay-Z on there. There were just, it was chock full of hits, had five singles on top of that. There was just a number of hits off the college dropout. But the thing about, like, late registration is it's very subpar comparatively as far as filling out an album. I feel like the singles this time around did a lot better, and Kanye also did better without the samples that he kind of used on the college dropout. But... It's just a very vapid project to me. That's kind of the concept. It just seems to be more focused on like the orchestration and mo moreover kind of the overbearing effect of like the, the encompassment of the music more so than the actual product of what it is. It's more in this case about the presentation. Now, that's not to say that Kanye does not deliver. I mean, he definitely has something to say on this project. He's not someone that you can say, oh, well, he's just talking about cars clothes and hoes he actually has stuff to say even if some of those topics get brought up he says it in a tangible way that makes him even if he's not as much of a sheer lyricist as jay-z or nos he still can keep up with them just because of the stuff he talks about and kind of the more thought-provoking way of doing it he's kind of like common but a little bit more club centric than common but also not quite as lyrical as Jay-Z. So he's kind of in between some of that. Just, he kind of lost, like, I feel like off of the college dropout, he was a lot more back, despite the fact that that album was called the college dropout, he was a lot more of a backpack and kind of introspective rapper that time around where he still has his introspection on late registration, but he's a lot more concerned with flossing and stunting and that type of stuff and kind of, being pensive about whether or not he wants to be such a do-gooder and that's fine you know, that's absolutely fine because i did think that kanye needed to loosen up and despite the fact that it's you have to understand that this project to me is like a very preppy project in terms of what it is this is by no means like 50 cent in the club or the game how we do or records like that or dr dre still dre something like that it's very much like to me a very preppy kind of kempt black person kind of club music where it's still club music but it's just so more sophisticated and a lot more uh just reserved you know just a lot more reserved in a lot of ways it's just interesting to kind of get like preppy club music because it's just not something i've heard in a long time when i listen to songs like diamonds from sierra leone gold digger and crack music, which are all three very good, decent club and go-go music and just night venue kind of music where you'd hear music in that sort of sense. It's so much different from some of the club records that you hear nowadays, especially with the trap and drill that's just taken over like the 2020s and late 2010s era. So this is really an ancient relic at this stage. Nobody, even Kanye West himself, is not making records like he was back in the summer of 2005. In early 2006 it's to be applauded you know i look after it and i just have to kind of say and stuff that i do miss this kanye west quite a bit it's definitely an interesting kanye just the stuff that he's talking about going from like a kind of repentance of a song in diamonds from sierra leone where he realizes that he's kind of sinning or having you know being kind of an asshole more but still is having a good time with it 
Gold Digger where he's talking about women who just want him for his money. Heard him say where he talks about the product of coming up and the things that are kind of going on about him and the problems that he's having. It's just kind of more of like a makeshift rap song. Touch the Sky, which is kind of like a graduation or a success kind of song where you achieve some award or earn something. And then Drive Slow, which kind of is an ode to like more syndicated, uh, well, not syndicated, but more kind of put on homies than you where you're kind of the younger one in the bunch and you're starting to hang out with folks who are going to start showing you the ropes and that type stuff in terms of like, you know, cruising around and getting drunk and late and that type of stuff as far as how that went. But I am going to go further in on these singles, but I just felt like that's kind of the concept of some of the topics. It's interesting how Kanye kind of does it, but we'll cover this. So the first single was Diamonds from Sierra Leone, and it also has a remix on here with Jay-Z. I'll go ahead and talk about both of these now. I feel like the remix is kind of, it, it's the same beat. Jay-Z did a really fire verse on here, but it doesn't really... I, I still feel like the original Diamonds is potent enough to where it may be... It's, 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 your, it's your call whether how badly you need a remix and whether or not it's actually necessary even with Jay-Z on there. I feel like if the remix had had a different beat or something... I don't know. I mean, sometimes, you know, that's the thing about remixes is sometimes people want a different beat. Sometimes people don't. But I feel like I really like the original Diamonds. It really has like a nice, I, I can definitely hear this in an outgoing sense, not just at a night venue, but even at a club. I mean, for club records, this is just a record. I feel like Gold Digger definitely gets the girth of like the airplay. I made a video about this in the past, but Gold Digger definitely gets the girth of like the Kanye West airplay anymore. That includes college dropout and graduation projects also, and even 808s and Heartbreak. It's Gold Digger that's the main largest song from Kanye's catalog anymore. But Diamonds slaps. I will definitely say that's like a full-blown slap across the face as to how hard that hits. It's just definitely good. You can still play it at a club depending upon where you go. It's definitely got a night setting. Kanye just tears that song apart. It's dramatic. The energy is perfect on there, just the way it's dramatic and it hits so hard. That's a good example of a lead single where it doesn't have a feature or an R&B singer on the hook, but somehow it works pretty well. It's just great night setting, can be played in most places, and for the most part it just happens to be energetic and pulsating. But then I would have to say uh, Gold Digger is Probably the more decent club song. This could be a dance song. It's an easy... Con I would even say this could be a TikTok song nowadays. It hit number one on the Billboard. Jamie Foxx knocked the hook out of the park. This They had some good emphasis. Jamie Foxx did slow jams with Kanye, so it's only natural they do a follow-up, and it kicks ass too. Definitely basic and... Pretty much the def one of the definitive Kanye West songs. Pretty much if you don't like this song, I'd say I'd question how much you would like Kanye West. But it hits pretty hard. It's just emphasized real well. Nice club bop is another one. Like I said, these are preppy as fuck kind of rap music club songs. But still, it stunts enough to be able to say that you could get down just kind of more in like, you know... Uh, yeah, this kind of like a James Brown or Rick James kind of vibe, just if they were to wear like Louis Vuitton and that type stuff, and just, you know, more pastels from like the 80s and just that kind of smooth and suave type stuff. It just, it's a more sophisticated kind of club song, just not so much like jerseys and tall tees, you know what I'm saying? It's just that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, so I would have to say. Heard him say is the third single, and Adam Levine from Maroon 5 does a great job on the hook on here. This is a great morning song. This definitely reminds me of a song when you're getting ready to go to work. Not really a club song at all, but just kind of you get in your car, you see your breath at like 6 o'clock in the morning, you are getting ready to get breakfast, you gotta get dressed and get ready to get going and that type stuff, and it just has like a more morning kind of vibe and just intended upon going on with the daily living type stuff but it works pretty well i mean that's the thing is it's melodic kanye does the song well it's just kind of a, a makeshift kind of song but it's not a bad makeshift song so I, I'm, I'm impressed that kanye knocked that out because 2005 didn't have too many songs 50 cent wasn't making makeshift rap songs neither was jay-z 
neither was GZ, neither was the game. So this is an avenue that Kanye pretty much knocked out. It's just too bad he didn't have more songs like this. It's just original and works really well. Touch the Sky has Lupe Fiasco, and this is one that just sounds, this is like a real summer song where you're just cruising in the summertime, just feeling the wind in your hair, really just kind of cutting loose and just kicking back, you know, just kind of having like a good time, just not a care in the world, just like, you know, just literally you just got paid today, having a great day, you just earned something, you just got that promotion, you know, graduation in some cases, just something that you earn that's just like, you just feel great. That's just kind of a, you know, beat your chest kind of song. But, you know, and if you're not really, it's it's kind of overbearing if you're not in that complete mood that Kanye and Lupe are in the song. But I do give it credit for being an infectious kind of song. So it definitely has some good vibes there. And then Drive Slow, the fifth single, this was kind of the one that did modest all the other four singles that I listed did pretty damn well. They all charted really high. But Drive Slow was kind of like the fifth single that normally this would happen with like the third single where people start to fall off a bit. But Kanye did it. You know, stellar verse from Paul Wall. I think Paul Wall actually probably almost upstaged Kanye just because he was just talking about him. Kanye was just telling a story, which it worked because that was the product of the song was trying to say, you know, talking about folks who put him on and he's just kind of kicking, you know, he's getting put up on game and that type of stuff. And he's getting ready to start branching out and growing. And it's kind of more of a coming of age kind of rap song in a lot of ways. Just it's it does it in a cool way. It's definitely Paul Wall kind of turned it into like a syrup sipping kind of Houston, Texas type song like. Paul Wall has on a lot of his records, but it's just interesting that it kind of vibed with that because Paul Wall wasn't really reminiscing and being nostalgic. So I like that he kind of did that. Paul Wall kind of did that to kind of keep it, or it's not just for like the teeny boppers and the young ends. And then GLC, I don't really know him that well, but he did a pretty good job also. It just kind of works that way as far as like trying to say, I can see this as like a syrup sipping song and definitely a song that you can hear in the car when you're hot boxing and that type of stuff, just cruising. It's per, it is a great song to drive slow to. It's just a great song to kind of be mellow, smoke to, you know, just cruise, be in like some alleyway, you know, smoking that type of stuff. Just at like a real slow creep. It, 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 Kanye knew somehow that that would be a song just for that perfect kind of vibe where you're not speeding, you're just kind of, cruising a little bit crawling you know that's kind of the situation so it's good all the singles really kick ass it just really happens to be the remark but the bad thing about this project i really could not connect with any of the remaining 15 songs so there's 15 on here there's six skits or four skits plus like a common song that's kind of a skit and then like a wake up mr west intro but 15 songs i like one third of the 15 songs so a lot of this project did pretty bad there's just a lot of stuff that's just overbearing has the wrong attraction of energy that i just felt like was probably maybe too like the product of the energy was just way too overbearing and kind of just dis distributed in a wrong way i kind of feel like songs like we major hey mama celebration bring me down and roses these are all songs that kind of have like a more kind of tear jerking and maybe not so much tear jerking but just kind of a like I, I can't really think of the word as to how to describe it but it has nothing to really do with outgoing it's just a lot it's not even house cleaning music as much as it is just kind of like sensitive and a lot more just homely that's really the thing about it where it feels like these are just songs you, you listen to watching like the home and garden channel on television or something a lot of these this they have no intention like you go from a song like drive slow and gold digger to songs like roses hey mama and bring me down and stuff and like gone which just sound completely awkward it's it doesn't even feel like they're on the same album which just kind of happens to be the remark about it it's just not the kind of conjecture of energy that i think probably should have been conveyed i mean it's just you kind of get an amalgamation of albums where you get like the kanye who's outgoing and kind of flosses a little bit more and goes about his day and has some fun and kicks off but then you also have the at home kanye west where he 
is more of a family man and more of like centered and getting like a new stapler for your office and getting like a new kind of pair of fuzzy slippers, that type stuff. It just really kind of has some laid back and it's just kind of awkward and like the vibes of it. it just did not really feel like any sort of outgoing. It really barely felt social at that. I just cannot think, I mean, minus an oh dear mother, I can't think of many situations where you play a song like Hey Mama and it's the same thing with Roses and Bring Me Down. Addiction was kind of an awkward song that just dealt with addiction, but it kind of felt like this that one I, I it's difficult to kind of see the concept of talking about addiction as far as like it, it just felt kind of like an awkward topic to kind of bring up you know it didn't really seem to have like the sensibility as far as talking about addictions but then not really having it in like any sort of like fun mentality as far as, i mean if eminem had done that song addiction he probably would have put a pretty good good spin on it and turned it into something crazy but it just really kind of felt like a placeholder and kind of a, a gap filler in a lot of ways and gone was a very awkward song i really did not like the beat it's kind of a real kind of orchestrated and just kind of sound like a play out in new york kind of vibe cameron could have definitely been on a better song and late was i mean there's just too many bombs on this project way too many way way too many like two-thirds of this project just had too many bombs and just duds on here and really the only <clears throat> the only album cut out of the 10 remaining songs that I felt like had any positive notation. I mean, I'll give, I would say Diamonds from Sierra Leone remix with Jay-Z is an almost song just because I like the original song so much. But the only other song out of those 10 that's worth anything is just crack music with the game. Now this is a song, it's not quite a club song, but it's definitely a song that I could hear in an out and about kind of area, like some night venue in the right setting. I don't think if you're going to be at like um, TGI Fridays, you're going to hear like crack music or something like that, or Olive Garden's probably not going to play this song just because it's kind of conveying that like, you know, black people went through some problems with crack and that type stuff. But just to kind of say like, it does have a pretty stellar night setting about it, just in the right sense. Like, depending upon where you go, I mean, obviously, this song is 17 years old, but to say in the right sense, it, it can put a spin where there's enough joints on this project where you can have, like, a night setting where you can throw on Diamonds from Sierra Leone, Crack Music, Drive Slow, and Gold Digger, and you've got some songs to kind of get you through like a third of the night, or you know, at least 25 minutes, something like that, to kind of say, hey, a lot of these slap pretty hard in terms of like, you know, just an overall night setting and that type of stuff. I mean, like I said, Crack Music is not a club song, but it just has that kind of social kind of vibe about it. It's, it's tough to describe because sometimes I come across these songs where they're not something that you know, you're going to dance to and jive to and that type of stuff, flirt and grind to and that type of stuff, but it is still something that you can hear out in public. It's a public song, but it's just, you know, you have to figure out where exactly you would hear it. It's just, because it's not a single and because there's so many songs and how old the song is, it may be very difficult to hear now, but I still think under the right setting, it wouldn't be awkward to hear it. So that's kind of what you have to pay attention to. So... So I'm going to go ahead and list the six songs out of 15 that I recommend to you. So it's pretty simple. It's just the singles and then the other one. So Gold Digger, Drive Slow, Heard Him Say, Diamonds from Sierra Leone, Touch the Sky, and Crack Music. And that's the basic concept about it. I mean, everything else is just kind of dud-like and this does not have enough appeal and is way too soft and kind of introverted in a lot of ways. It just does not have the affable kind of social vibe that's needed to really express listening to it beyond just really spending the whole day or whole week or whole month at the house. If that's what you're trying to do, then yeah, you've got a good seven or eight or nine songs for doing that. But for the most part, if you want I mean, this album does at least have the outgoing vibes, but it doesn't, it's really like a fourth of what the album actually has to offer. So that's just kind of, or it's just a fourth of what the album offers, I should say. So that's just kind of the concept. But um, I'm going to score this album, me liking six out of 15. I'm going to give this album a four out of 10, just because I feel like uh, two 
two fifths of the project. Two, yeah, two fifths would be a four out of ten. I feel like it's just spot on right there. Maybe I'll give it a four and a half out of ten just because I did. I'll give it a four and a half out of ten just because I feel like the remix to Diamonds was an extra kick in there. So that's kind of the cons of four and a half out of ten. The social score I'll give an eight just because they had five whopping singles that all kicked ass. And I kind of feel like this was a great job. This definitely was something. This was Con one of Kanye's best efforts in terms of promotion. He definitely promoted this, and he had stuff to say, and he knocked it out of the park, and he did it well. It's just the fact that it's just kind of like almost like a, a, it's a misconception just because the rest of the album is really not past the gloss of the singles. It's really not as social a project as you might think it is. That's kind of a disappointment in a lot of ways. But, so yeah, so the future, Kanye dropped an album back in February called Dawn to Two, and just about a year ago, he dropped Dawn to One, which are both dedicated to his late mother. So that's kind of the concept here, and, uh, you know, Kanye has changed a lot. This is definitely the Kanye I prefer, despite that I gave this album an underwhelming score. I still prefer a lot of the music on this record compared to new Kanye just because he went through so many radical changes. That's kind of the concept. But yeah, that's just something to understand.